of his praise. Our devotion we're looking at Psalm 145. In the Old Testament, it is Psalm number 145. Psalm number 145. Verses 1 through 9. Psalm 145. When you found it, you will discover these words. I will extol you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. Men shall speak of your might, of your awesome acts, and I will declare your greatness. They shall utter the memory of your great goodness and shall sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all in his tender mercies are over all his works. Father God in heavens, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we come. God, we thank you. We worship you. God, we praise you for your mighty acts. We praise you for your mercies. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy exists to all its generations. God, we honor you today. Thank you, Father God, for being with us. We thank you, Lord, for another Lord's Day where we can raise our hands. We can lift our voices. We can do our dance. We can clap our hands unto you, Father God. Lord, we come this morning to give you praise, to give you honor, to glorify you. God, we thank you for 17 years. 17 years of uninterrupted service. God, we praise you for keeping us, for keeping our church together, for blessing every member, for blessing every visitor. God, we honor you today. And God, we thank you most of all for just being God. God, we thank you for being God all by yourself. We thank you for being the, the majestic God. We thank you for being the great God. We thank you for being the good God. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy for us. We don't deserve it, but you keep giving it to us. Lord, you've allowed us to make it one more time to the house of worship. You've allowed us to make one more time to the house of prayer. You've allowed us to make it one more time to the house of praise. And for that, Lord, we're thankful. Now, Lord, we come and we ask you that your Holy Spirit will rule and super rule. That your Holy Spirit will teach us today. That your Holy Spirit will make his way throughout our hearts and throughout our lives. Bless us, Lord, that we will be better at 12 o'clock than we were at 10 o'clock. That life will continue to roll on just a little while longer. That after we have left this place, we will be a witness for you. We can tell men, women, boys, and girls about the God we serve and how good you are. Lord, we thank you now for the preacher. We pray, Father God, that you let the preacher down into the deep wells of your word. That old habits will be thrown away. Old burdens will be rolled away. That we will be better Christians and we will be better saints unto you. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory. We ask you to keep the glory. We ask you, Father God, to keep your glory. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray. And we ask it all. And the church said, Amen. 
It is indeed a privilege and an honor to stand before you all today and present these few words to a diligent, godly, hard-working pastor of the New Beginning Church, Pastor Matthew Alexander Davis. It is indeed a privilege to be able to serve under such great leadership as a pastor so diligently and hardworking indeed. We thank God for Pastor Matthew A. Davis. He has been the shepherd of the New Beginning Church for 17 years. Hallelujah. 17 years is an accomplishment and an achievement and we proud applaud Pastor Davis on this commitment to the ministry. Pastor Davis has always strived to be the best shepherd to this flock he can be. And no matter what obstacle come his way, he protects and guides us with the wisdom God has instilled in him. 2 Timothy 4 and 2 say, Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. We have seen over the years that this is exactly what Pastor Davis has done for his counseling session, Bible study session, teaching and encouraging words. We have watched Pastor David grow mentally and spiritually and even most recently educationally. We have the honor of calling him Dr. David. His doctrine is transformed. Leadership truly exemplifies him as a person because of everything he does put God first and ties to transformation not only to the people, but to the world around him. He brings the word of God faithfully and truthfully to us. We celebrate and congratulate Pastor Matthew A. Davis on this exemplary anniversary. And we pray that God continue to walk with and guide him on his journey for the years to come. Amen.
sister this morning that says that thank you, thank you. But for the grace of God yeah. it could have been her I know, yes. so we're blessed today yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, to be here and to have this opportunity may I say that I am doubly blessed to be called friend of uh, the Reverend Doctor Matthew A. Davis, Amen. your esteemed pastor. Amen. Amen. I, I thank God for him. I thank God for his spirit. I thank God for his uh, scholarship. I thank God for his being just a wonderful person. Amen. Uh, and uh, it's just good to know him. It is good also to understand that uh, by his sign is uh, my dear sister, Sister Caroline. Amen. 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 The one that when none of us can get him to do right, <laughs> she's the one we have to go to. Amen. To chastise and correct him. Amen. And so we, <laughs> we thank God for Sister Davis this morning for the great work that she does. And listen, I thank God for this, the New Beginning Church family. Amen. Give yourself a give yourself a beautiful um, For if we do not have those willing and obedient fathers, then we could not claim the title of leader. And so, uh, brother, thank God 
with those who stand and hold up the arms of our pastor, Pastor Davis. Amen. I had you to sit down because I have about a 15 minute dissertation and a 45 minute sermon and that will take up my hour. And somebody saying, you'll be here by yourself. <laughs> well, fortunately, I did not eat before coming and so uh, you will get rid of me a lot sooner. Right, you're right. But listen, I am truly delighted. 17 years. Amen. And uh, he's, he's, he's beginning to sound like a pastor. <laughs> after, after, <laughs> after a few more years, you, you won't be able to tell him from all the other pastors that have been around for all of these years. But really and truly, that's a great feat. Um, I heard uh, in, in the prayer that, uh, uh, you know, 17 years I was listening, Pastor, of uninterrupted service. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, you do know that that was not the desire of Satan. Well, you're right. That there would be 17 years of uninterrupted service. For Satan has laid a many trap yes, that he would hope he would be able to spring on you and this wonderful people that would interrupt what God is doing. But the Lord has deemed it to be so that you've toiled on for these 17 years. And I thank God for that. Um, inasmuch as we are here, and we have been given the task of bringing a message, let me see if, if I can find something uh, that would uh, uh, pay some uh, help to this occasion and uh, Dr. Gordon Taylor that you hear me reference quite often uh, asked the question once can we truly preach can we truly preach I know we talk about it all the time but, uh, and so I think I understand that he meant that um, we keep trying, and, but I'm not real sure that we ever get it right. But it's going to have to do until something better comes along. All right, sir. Yeah. Amen. 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 This morning in uh, the book of Romans chapter 10, <coughs> There is a passage of scripture, chapter 10, and uh, I'll just read a little bit of that. Um, beginning at verse 14, English Standard Bible, Verse 14, chapter 10. Father, now we pray that as your word goes forth, that you will use this preacher to speak to his people in a manner that is pleasing to you with the power that only you can give. This is your servant's prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. How then will they call on him 
in whom they have not believed. And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? Yes, sir. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Preach it. Preach it. Preach the word. Preach it. There is a commercial on television now, and I'm not real sure uh, what it's advertising, but uh, you find a stewardess, I believe, that ask the question, is there anyone on this plane that know how to fly? This one young fella gets up and he says, oh yes, I know how because I have watched certain programs that uh, flying takes place Consequently, I will be able to fly this plane. You can imagine the dismay that it made that made its way across the faces of those individuals, no doubt 20 to 30,000 feet in the air. And the only thing, or the only person that they could depend upon was an individual that knew about flying yes, sir. by watching some television program. The late Dr. C.A.W. Clark Good Street Church of Dallas, Texas, preached at uh, Dr. Robert Wilson's anniversary many years ago. And he used as a subject is a preacher in the house. <laughs> this morning, this morning, this morning, that's still a pertinent question. Still a question that needs to be asked. And until the Lord comes back, we need to get an answer. Is there a preacher in the house. Why is that so important? That if you have an emergency in the air, that you have a spare pilot, if you have sickness, or an emergency, a physical emergency, that you would have a doctor in the house. What about the disease that all of us needy folk that make up this room this morning, the need that we have, that uh, the bread of this world cannot satisfy its hunger, the waters of this world cannot satisfy its thirst. We need to be able to answer the question and to understand the importance yes, sir. of there being a preacher yes. in the house. 
Now let me say this. It may be tradition that uh, at uh, weddings or funerals or other uh, types of events that we would expect a preacher to be present. And uh, as a result, people will scurry around yes, sir. to be sure that a preacher is available. But you know, I would suggest to you that somewhere in the minds of individuals, including believers, yes, sir. that we would somehow wish that we did not need a preacher. Well, well, well. Now you say, well, Pastor, this is, you you in, uh, on shaky ground, I, I'm, on, right. I'm on firm ground. Right. <laughs> Amen. Uh, if, if we could call one of the greatest leaders, and perhaps if you want to call him a preacher, uh, in, in, in the word of God, if, if we could uh, uh, call that great leader Moses and ask him, Moses, what is the general thinking uh, when it comes to the acceptance of preachers? And he would tell you that uh, Folk will follow a preacher as long as they're getting from him what they want. Help me somebody. Uh, but if they find themselves in some hardship, in some difficult place, they will quickly Turn on him. You're right. You're right. Help me now. You're right. Moses realized that being commissioned by God that he went into Egypt to deliver folk that were in trouble. By the mighty hand of God, he led them out and uh, carried them into the wilderness and on their way to the land of Canaan. But they ran into problems on their way. And the folk began to ask Moses, did you bring us out here uh, that we might die in the wilderness? We would have been better if we had stayed back in Egypt. At least we had melons and leeks and what have you to eat and here we are out here we're hungry and so what good are you to folks such as us I would suggest to you that even in wonderful congregations such as this the New Beginning Church and congregations all around the country and all around the world that there are folk who have benefited uh, from the words of some preacher. May have been some young individual that when his name was called, he sprang to his feet and rushed to the pulpit and gave a powerful sermon. Or it could have been some old individual who shuffled from his seat and uh, with his hair flowering for the gray, voice trembling, delivered a message. But we still have the issue of how important is that preacher. Lest I keep you too long. May I say this? And, and then, then, then you don't have to listen to anything. You do need a preacher. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 You, you need a 
You, you need a preacher. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. We, we've got that out of the way, so uh, y'all can pay me and I can go. <laughs> yes, sir. How then, how then, the great apostle and the great preacher, how then will they call on him? Yes, sir. And whom? They have not believed. Paul is trying to get us somewhere. He says that in order for us to believe, we, we must do some things. And he begins to enumerate some things. And in the flowery words of the uh, King James Version, he says, how shall yeah, they call on him? <laughs> and whom they have not believed. Yes, sir. How shall they believe in him in whom they have never heard? Preacher, preacher. How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall he preach except he be sent? What do we have? We have a proclamation and if we have a proclamation, the proclamation is of no good to us unless we have a proclaimer. What is the proclamation? Paul, from the early writings of this book of Romans, began to share with us uh, a message that uh, he called the gospel of Jesus Christ, where he hurriedly says to the church at Rome, I am not ashamed of the gospel. How come you're not ashamed of the gospel? Paul says, because it is the power of God yes, unto salvation to everyone that believes. In other words, the gospel is good for the Jew uh -huh. as well as the Gentile. Uh -huh. You cannot be too good not to need the gospel. You cannot be too bad to need the gospel. The gospel is the power of God for those needing salvation. So there is this proclamation. This proclamation is the gospel of Jesus Christ. This proclamation is what uh, the hearts of men need. Those of us who cry out, O oh, wretched man that I am, who can deliver me from the body of this death? Who is it that can snatch me from the jaws of hell? Who is it that can take me and pick me up out of the muck and the mire of a mean, evil world and plant my feet yes, sir. on a solid rock? Yes, sir. Who can deliver me? Nobody but Jesus. So, so, so the proclamation is the gospel of Jesus Christ and uh, what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? Well, uh, you don't have to be a rose scholar. You don't have to be a doctor like Pastor Davis. Uh, you, you can be a, a sixth grade graduate. Amen. You, as a matter of fact, you don't have to be any of that. You just uh, need to go to Sunday school. And some saintly Sunday school teacher will tell you that the gospel story is the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That, that, that if you believe on that story, yeah. help me somebody, if you believe that, uh, the Bible says, thou shall be saved. Yeah. But then, how am I going to believe that? How, how, how will I believe that? I can't believe that unless I hear that. Yes, Amen. It's necessary that that story be told to me. And, and, and let me say to you, my brothers and sisters, and let me not get out of order too much, but uh, listen, preaching is not 
the same as uh, watching uh, uh, somebody on television explain. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Something yeah. about the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. The preaching is uh, being able to look into the eyes, yeah. not of an audience, but into the eyes of a congregation. Yeah where I can feel what's emanating from your heart and you can feel what's coming from mine. I can share the burning tears that roll down your face and you can see the passion that is in my voice reaching out to you. Preaching is important. Being able to hear from a frail, fragile voice. Amen, amen. Uh, this this, this treasure that is kept in an earthen vessel. One thing about the preacher, don't, don't, don't look at him as uh, infallible or whatever you want to call it. He's an earthen vessel. Uh, it's not the vessel, but it's what's in the vessel. Uh, that, that which is important is what's in the vessel. Uh, uh, my 10th grade teacher hearing that I was a preacher uh, could not believe it. <laughs> she was looking at the vessel. And, and, and I couldn't believe it either because I questioned God as to can you find somebody else? Or some of them boys in my class that were far better than I but, 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 but Paul says but we hold these truths in earth, yes, fragile, frail yes, no. vessels. Yes. But we have this precious truth oh, no. that tells of someone mm -hmm. that gave up a place in the shiny coats of glory, yes, yes. Preacher, that preacher. came down into a evil, sin-sick world. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Not to save good folk, but to save no good people like you and me. Amen. Somebody that came down and uh, he had a good place seated there in uh, the throne room of God with his father. But he came into this world and gave up his life. Says that you need to hear that. And when you hear it, uh, an operation needs to be set up. Yes. Not in an operating room. Uh, but wherever you can be found, uh, there's surgery that needs to be done to the heart. A divine application must be made to the heart. And when that operation takes place and one believes the gospel message yes. and then once you re receive your surgery, you know how we like to brag on our doctor when we got a good doctor. Amen. Amen. You go to the doctor and he help you with your arthritis. All right. Amen. You tell everybody about that ointment he gave you. Amen. You spread the word all over the place. Yes, sir. Well, the scripture says that once God has worked on your heart, yes. once the blood of Jesus has been applied, yes, he says then you need to do what? Confess yes. with your mouth. Yes. In other words, you need to tell somebody yes. what Jesus has done for you. Yes. And how is all of this uh, proclamation going to take place. Yes. It can't take place unless you have a proclaimer. All right, all right. You need a preacher. Yes. Yes, Amen. You need a, a frail, young, old, in between, yes. well educated, uneducated. Yes, sir. You need a preacher. Yes, right. But one thing about the preacher that you need. He may not be educated. Well, he may not. He may not be the very best person right. that you've ever met in your life. 
But one thing Paul required of the preacher yes, is that he be sent. Yes, Help me somebody. Yes, not, not somebody that decided that this is what I want to do and this seems like a good profession to go into, but somebody that God picked out to be picked on, sent into a world to declare to a dying world uh, the wage of sin is death, but that the gift of God is eternal life. He must be sent and uh, he must preach the word of God. Uh, to the extent that Paul borrows from the words of Isaiah, how beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel. Where does he get that from? That's uh, a messenger uh, that would carry word to the troops in the field, passing on the intelligence that they needed to win their battle. Come on now. And when the soldiers would see the messenger coming, yes, because they knew they had some good news, mm -hmm. they said, how beautiful are the feet yeah, yeah. of those that preach the gospel. Yeah, yeah. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, yeah, yeah. there is a message today. Uh -huh. Yes, that people need to call on Jesus. And if they call on Jesus, yeah, yeah. then Jesus will save them. Yeah. But they must believe in him. Yeah. But they cannot believe in him until they hear about him. Yeah. And how can they hear without a preacher? Yeah. And how can he preach except he be sent? Yeah. My brothers and my sisters, uh, the message today is about Christ Jesus. Yeah. In him we live. Yeah. In him we move. Yeah. In him uh, we have our being. Yeah. Those soldiers used to say, uh, I woke up this morning uh, with my mind uh, stayed on Jesus. I don't know uh, how you feel about it, uh, but he brought me uh, not from a long way, uh, yeah. but he brought me uh, all of the way. Uh, yeah. Ever since that day uh, yeah. that I heard about Jesus, uh, yeah. I've been running for him uh, a mighty long time, uh, yeah. and I'm not tired yet. Yeah. Sometimes up uh, and sometimes down, uh, sometimes level uh, yeah. with the brown, uh, but that's all. I'm going to keep on running But one of these old days My feet will strike glory I lay down My heavy load And that same Jesus That died on Calvary That same Jesus That lay in the grave That same Jesus That got up out of the grave He'll welcome me Will he welcome you And he all right Keep on preaching. Uh, you need to keep on telling a uh, uh, dying world about Jesus. Uh, you can tell them uh, yeah, about the welfare system. Uh, you can tell them uh, about rent subsidy. Uh, you can tell them uh, about FEMA. But don't forget uh, to tell them about Jesus. He's the one. Jesus. In the morning, Jesus at noonday, Jesus in the midnight hour. I know he's all right. Yes, sir. Yeah, all right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
not only that, he is the majestic God. Thank you, Pastor Booker, for, for being hermeneutically correct and homiletically sound. Thank you for a great message to remind us it's all because of Jesus. And somebody looking, somebody here, somebody watching may still be wondering, how can I get to know this Jesus that the preacher is so excited about? Let me remind you, the preacher says that this same Jesus took a tree. This Jesus took a stake. This Jesus took a stick. He carried it up Calvary's hill. The preacher says he died for bad folk, not good folk. He gave a voluntary death for messed up people. The preacher declares that they killed him on Calvary. They laid him in a barber too. And it was borrowed because he didn't need it too long. For early that third day morning, he rose with all power from the dead. What the preacher is saying to us today is if you can believe the story that Jesus died, he was buried, he rose, and he was seen, you can be saved today. You can be changed. You can be made over. You can be regenerated. You can be renewed. If, and you can go to heaven just to leave in this story. The door of the church is open. You can remember this day that I was born again. I was saved. I was made fit for heaven on the 17th anniversary. You can mark this day down that you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you've never received him, would you join me in prayer? Just bow your head with me, repeat after me, and invite him into your life just by believing this simple story. Say these words, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. Well, we thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We thank God for blessing us. For, we thank God for this word. Let's thank God for the man of God, for, for the preacher. So for certainly we can't hear without the preacher. And certainly he has broken the word of life for us, for us this day. And we thank God for him. We thank him for traveling from the big city all the way to the country to share this word of God with us. All the way from Kendleton, Texas. Population 598. We're so glad. 592. We're so glad to have Pastor Booker and Sister Booker. Thank you for, for being here with us with us today. Thank you for the word. Thank you for, for challenging us. Encouraging us. Amen. Let me thank Sister Cora Woods and Brother Larry Dixon. Thank you so much for your, your kindness and your words. It is offering time. It is offering time. It is offering time. We ought to get excited. It is offering time. Our ushers have two, two envelopes. One is white and red, and the other is blue and blue and white. Or white and blue and red and blue. Uh, the blue and white one is for tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. And um, the red and white is for pastor's love offering. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand way up in the air. Raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, 
and you will be served. Just ask for whichever envelope you need and whichever two envelopes you need and you will be served. Jesus at yahoo.com lifting.jesus at yahoo.com Father God we thank you for this privilege of giving, we thank you for those who give, we thank you for money we thank you for increase, we thank you for income, we thank you Father God for blessing us here today, we thank you for your word we ask you to bless us to give not grudgingly, nor out of necessity for God we know you love a cheerful giver, in Jesus name we pray Amen. Thank God. Let's just start to stand and follow the young people from the rear to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. to the New Beginning Church for your prayers and well wishes for the loss of our brother, 
Ruben Lynn Dixon. It is, it is a great comfort to know we can count on each of you and count on each other through whatever life brings. The Dixon, the Urban, and the Jones family. Thank you so much. Amen. It's been 17 years. I said it's been 17 years. Hallelujah to the Lord. It's been, seven, it's been 17, 17 years and God has has tremendously, has tremendously blessed our church. He has, has blessed us in a way that we could not even imagine. He has, he's, he's blessed us and we have seen his blessing. We have, he has manifested his blessings. He, he brought us from Hartsville Elementary School where we worshiped and we had Bible study and we faithfully gave to the Lord. He moved us to Johnson and Johnson, an adult daycare on the southwest side of town, from the southeast to the southwest. And God kept right on blessing where we were in a storefront and we could get about 80 people in that storefront and we praised God and we worshiped him. And while we were in that storefront, we were challenged to build our very own cross-shaped building. And I want to remind you, God did it. I want to tell you, God has, God has done great things. When you drive up out here, when you would drive up along this street and you would look over in this direction, there were 30-foot trees there. And they were thick. And the Lord, the Lord was clear that people see forests, people see woods, but God allowed me to see a soul mind where lives could be changed, where families could be saved, where adventures can be put in the hearts of young people. And so God allowed 22 adults 18 children to build a 9,200 square foot building. And I'm glad. A tastefully built building where now over 25 different entities have met in this building. And God is still multiplying in giving. And then God even chose to allow us to wipe away. I'm talking about delete. I'm talking about control all delete to start over. When he wiped away $350,000 off our debt because God is faithful. I mean, God did. I, I remember when, when, when I was even considering pastoring the New Beginning Church, I had individuals who were not pastors trying to tell me what pastors can and cannot do and what God would do with you. Individuals who have never pastored, who have never stood where pastors stood. Individuals who, who are spectators said to me, you are a foreign missionary and you're good at it. You are an evangelist and you're great at it. And evangelists and missionaries cannot su successfully pass the people. But guess what God did? And he did it over and over. He made himself known. He made himself visible. He, he has blessed us. And then there are some who said, within three months, you will be shut down. Here we are 17 years later. Not only did God allow us to build a building, he allowed us to build a second building. He allowed us to put a wing on, on the west side that, that young people can hear music, can learn music, and then they can make money from knowing music. Well, thousands of children can come and 
and really get to know music firsthand. Not only can they play by ear, they can play by notes. Then God allowed us to put together the second builder, which my little minute mind thought we were just going to take a, a group of senior citizens and teach them basic computer skills. Then allow children to come in and do more advanced skills. But God has put together a building where children are learning robotics, where children are learning drones, where children are getting certifications. And, and now children are driving all the way from League City, all the way from Spring, Texas, all the way from Katy, just to show up to one place that used to be a horse pasture just to get to know. And now those children have gone on to be engineers. They have gone on to be pharmacists. They have gone on to graduate from college in technology. They've gone on to graduate from college in music. It's because God has done it. And God has tremendously blessed our church. Not only has he manifested himself in this way, he has also manifested himself in our spirit souls have been saved. Marriages have been spared. Children have been put on new directions. Every year our goal is to reach 50 souls for Jesus Christ through baptism, through salvation, and through church membership. And once we have reached them through salvation, it really doesn't matter if they join the New Beginning Church. We got another box checked that God has reached another soul that the devil thought he had. And we're just glad about it. And so here at our church, we rejoice because of money. We rejoice because of things. But we just get excited when one more soul comes to Christ. And God is, is continuing to do it. And he has blessed us. I want to ask Sister Davis to come because during that period, she was right with me. I, I, I do have the advantage uh, most pastors do not enjoy. <laughs> I have an advantage that most do not, Brother Gibson, most don't enjoy, which is a supported wife that keep prodding me. And Pastor Booker was right. Pastor Booker was right. That prods me and pumps me and, and instructs me and, and reminds me. And, and many pastors do not have, have that, the beauty of that. And not only that, we brought so many musicians through here that just wouldn't work. And, and every time I look up, Sister David said, you need to get a new musician. I can't do that. I said, use what you got. And what we got is what we need. That may not be good English, but, but what we got is what we need. Because Pastor Booker, musicians get outrageous sometimes. They act like they straight from the devil. I mean, they act like... They don't, they don't really participate in ministry too well. It's, it's all about them. We interviewed one musician and he said, oh man, I said, man, why are you not playing for your daddy? Your daddy's a pastor. He said, we go where the money is. I said, well, this ain't the place for you because we ain't got no money for you. We, we want you here to do ministry. And every single time we interviewed and every single time we brought on a musician, Sister David stepped aside. And then in through three weeks, I say to her, you're going to have to step back up. And she, you know, she so faithfully, faithfully did that. And so I have the privilege that most pastors don't have. And, I, and I'm glad about it. So I want to thank her for, for being by my side, for, for being the recipe for greatness at the New Beginning Church. And God has truly blessed us. So I'm going to ask her to say hello to, to the people. To all of you all, so glad you all could come, and uh, we just thank and praise God for just allowing us to be here, just to be here after everything that have gone on in the world through our sickness. God is still blessing, and we just thank God for that. We thank God for our pastor and Pastor Davis always being open, always leading us by the word of God. And that is what we need, and we give God glory. We give him honor, and we give you praise. So thank you, Pastor Davis, for being my pastor and also for being my husband. Because I pray, and I just told him this week, I pray that God would send me a man that feared God. 
I know that if the person fears God, then that person's gonna treat me right. So I don't have nothing to worry about. <laughs> But you know, in every marriage, there is a downside, right? Um, I cycle for for fun. I cycle, and, and it's nothing to chalk up 50 miles in a week, 75 miles in a week. And, and Sister Davis has started cycling, cycling with me. And she started during the time she was actually taking chemo. And I thought, until, and this has been going on for probably two, three years that she's been with me. I've been doing it for almost six years. So I thought, I thought, Brother Miles, she was cycling because she just wanted to be a part of cycling. I, I thought, I thought she was just enjoying the moment until I overheard her in her family meetings. And you know, you get the truth in family meetings. So I began to listen in and I heard her say, I am doing this because I'm in support of my husband. Now all these years, the two, two and a half years or so, I thought that she was enjoying <laughs> riding in front of me and leading and guiding me. I found out yesterday that it was only because she's trying to keep her vows for better and for worse, for richer and for poor, until death do us part. But I guess that's all right too, huh? So I want to thank her for enduring, enduring all the things that I come up with and I dream up with and, and every single thing that God has blessed us to work on together has been a gigantic success. And I, again, I want to I wanna thank her. I want to thank the members of the New Beginning Church. Thank you so much for, thank you for tolerating me, for, for putting up with me, for allowing God to keep drawing you back to the place where Pastor Booker said to hear a word from the Lord. Thank you for allowing me, as Brother Dixon said, to instruct you, to reprove you. Thank you for allowing me to be your pastor. And a pastor speaks into your life. A pastor is somebody who, who don't always have the right answers, but he will search for it. He will look for it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for just being kindly affectionate. Some of you send little notes every other week or every other day just to say, thank you for being my pastor. That goes a long way. Thank you for for the money you give, for your contributions, for being faithful in ministry. Thank you. Thank you for doing things that you don't want to do. When you walk away, you grit your teeth and roll your eyes and, and say, that pastor of yours. Thank you. Thank you for just hanging in there through the tough times. I realize that COVID-19 has caused us great harm. And some of you could have dropped out. And many in churches all over the world has really dropped out. But I can honestly say at the New Beginning Church, you didn't drop out. When we were meeting away from the church, you kept sending in tithes and offerings. You kept giving to the ministry cause. And I want you to give yourself a hand just for, for sticking in there, for hanging in there during the tough times. Because when the pressure is applied, whatever is in you, go come out of you. And I want to thank you for being a word church, a, a church that will believe the word of God. And God has blessed us because we believe the word. That's why we're listening to the word daily. We're reading the word the daily. We are journaling the word. I won't ask you to raise your hand and that. I won't ask you how far behind you are or how far ahead you are, but we're listening to the word daily and, and we're, we're journaling what God's speaking to us. And, and we thank God for a church that is a word church. Not a Baptist church, not a Methodist church, but a word church. So thank you so much for being here. I want Brother Gibson to stand and tell us who he is and, and his present position and his future position. Turn, turn around, look at them, and tell them, tell them who you are, and uh, just tell them.
Let's see how it goes before we do on. Well, I, I guess I'll say good morning, church, and I'm uh, Judge uh, Mark Gibson. I'm the Justice of Peace for Precinct 2 in Fort Bend County. If you live in Fort Bend County, I replaced Judge Pilser. I was on the bench 28 and a half years, and I was appointed to replace him on the roof for the seat next year in 2022. I've known, uh, known uh, Pastor Davis. We, we I call him Matt. Together at Pulpit Street, but I've uh, known him for a number of years. And I spoke with him, uh, I guess, yesterday, whatever, so I was trying to make it. So I broke away from campaigning between two churches today and uh, came over here and passed out to leave, make another church at, at noon. But anyway, it's always an honor. You've got a great pastor. I've known him since we were, like I said, at the uh, Junior Deacon Board, and uh, uh, always an honor to come and support him. And, Always look forward to it. So, Pastor, you're doing a great job. Thank you, sir. Always able to be, always look forward to support you. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Gibson. Uh, what he didn't tell you is that uh, when we were on the Junior Deacon Board together, I was 22 and he was 29. <laughs> Oh, thank you, thank you so much for, for sticking with us. And, and that was thirty some years ago, thirty literally thirty six years ago. And he has he has stuck with me. He has, has also stuck with the New Beginning Church. He's always contributing and he's always dropping in, even when I don't announce that he's here. He's here. So we're looking forward to him being the judge again. Here come the judge again. We're supporting Brother Mark Gibson. As it does. And then Pastor Booker, he heard that you were going to be here, so he's really here because because he, he heard you were going to be here. So uh, at first he was going to go campaign somewhere else, and he was on his way. And this is his question: Is Pastor Booker going to be there? So, so uh, thank you, Pastor Booker, for being a drawing card. So if you would, Pastor, come and uh, and uh, also uh, lead us out of here. Amen.
hand, shake the preacher's hand while you show him a hug, show him some love. Amen. Thank God for the man.